Good evening and welcome. We are having some nightmare, nightmare technical gl glitches here. We're hoping you're able to uh, um, watch us. We're hoping you're able to see us. But at the moment, we are having some sort of um, problems. We're not sure exactly what is going on, but uh, we, sh we hope to rectify those problems as quickly as possible. My name is Tonchi Prusak and joining me is, is Josip Zilic. And um, uh, look, it's, it's the technical glitches. I don't know what is going on. Hopefully, people can see us. And if you can, uh, let us know in the comments section. Um, it's the Oz Crow Soccer Show, Episode 5. Yossip, let's hope the, uh, the internet gurus, or whatever it's happening yeah. now. Yossip, we've um, got success, mate. We've got Maxi and, uh, and Sesto, number 600 himself, uh, online. Good on you, Anthony. Thank you, Hi, folks. I'm, Thank you for that feedback. I don't and know Maxie. what... Good day, Susie. Yeah, don't know what's going on there, but, uh, geez, if ever we wanted a show not to uh, get, um, what's the word, sabotaged by the technology, it's today. We yeah. have got an amazing show, Yossip, episode five. Um, tonight, we've got that much happening in the Australian-Croatian scene, and we've got that much happening in the Croatian high and L scene. Um, we don't know where to start, and um, I'll tell you what, pre-season is starting to move ever so close to the start of the season. And um, boy, for Victorian and South Australian um, fans of, of their respective NPL and state leagues, this weekend it all kicks off. And uh, we'll be talking a lot tonight with our main guests. And they are. Who are they? Uh, we've got uh, some big people, big people in the Croatian soccer community from big Victoria people. online because the NPL in Victoria kicks off this week. So we have the head coach of Melbourne Knights, Steve Berbich, the head coach of St. Albans Dynamo. Kruni Razov, and the skipper of Dandy City, Stephen Topalovic. Yeah, they'll be joining us all a little later on in the show. Um, and I uh, cannot – look, it's just been a flurry of last-minute um, transfer activity, um, I think, throughout, you know, throughout the day. Um, just up until about, I think, half an hour ago or so, there were um, last-minute um, – signings being made public so we'll get to the bottom of all of the new signings um with those three respective clubs a little later on um big shout out to our sponsors our episode um sponsors tonight macron plemet app and slavicek studio of architecture all the way from western australia uh, robert slavicek jumping on board as well so if you need any drafting or architectural work robert formerly of Sydney and formerly of Melbourne now of Perth. He's the man to, to uh, see. So apologies to our um, advertisers tonight if we're not able to get those ads played for whatever reason. Just seemed to seem like there was just a red screen. I'm not sure what was going on. Um, I don't know seat. what that is. We won't focus on that. But what no. I will focus on is I had a look at some of Robert's uh, work, architecture. I tell you what, if you want to, if you want to get yourself a spectacular home, have a look at his portfolio online. He has got some amazing looking houses that he works on. So uh, well done, Robert, and thanks for joining the show. Yeah. Okay, Yossip, you're going to be stepping away from the screen very, very shortly while uh, and you get yourself ready. It is time for the news desk, and we're talking about the Australian Croatian scene. Don't go away. G'day everyone and welcome to the news around Australia for our Australian Croatian football community. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, we'll be speaking with uh, the three Victorian NPL1 clubs uh, with the head coach of uh, Melbourne Knights and Albans Dynamo and the captain of Dandy City joining us. But we'll move on to North Geelong. Uh, North Geelong had themselves a very busy weekend uh, taking out the annual, uh, what previously was known as the Advertiser Cup, the Addy Cup, uh, or now known as the Geelong Cup, beating uh, arch rivals Geelong 2-1 uh, over at their hosts, Geelong Rangers. So well done to North Geelong for taking that out for the 21st time, I believe. Uh, so that's uh, just adding more distance between ourselves and, and the rest. Fantastic. And it's a promising start to the, to the North Geelong Warriors and uh, kick, kicking off uh, with the Crow Cup as well. So adding this to it just builds the confidence leading into the practice match this coming weekend on Saturday, 19th of Feb, with a 12 p.m. kickoff under 21s against the NPL outfit of, and some of the A-League uh, fringe players of Western United, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're having some trouble with those uh, video overlays. Yeah, it looks like it's all, all the video. Yeah, we might just have to yep. get rid we of them. Just soldier on, mate. 
Yeah, it's um, whatever it is. For, for whatever reason, all of those video um, just don't seem to be working tonight, unfortunately. Yep. So, uh, we won't we... focus on that. We'll go ahead, yeah. mate. So Strathmore had a big announcement um, with the departure of Harry Matkovic, unfortunately having to uh, part ways with the club. Uh, it seems like he has to t pursue other interests. So um, we wish Harry all the best, and we wish Strathmore Split, a fantastic club in the northern suburbs of Melbourne, all the best too. Harry's done some fantastic work there. Joining the club when they're in State 4 as a player coach and then elevating them through the ranks. And they're sitting at State 1 now, uh, ready to really rocket ahead. Um, they've got a good bunch of juniors and they are looking out for a couple of uh, players here and there in their junior ranks. So if you if you are in the northern suburbs and looking for um, a club to play, reach out to the great people of Strathmore Split. But we'll head over to, um, over to Adelaide now. Um, Adelaide released their 70th anniversary logo, which unfortunately with the video t issues that we've got tonight, we won't be able to just throw on the screen and this Taunchy can pull this up miracle off. But it's a wonderful looking logo in recognition of 70 years for Adelaide Croatia and our oldest Croatian established soccer club. So congratulations on 70 years. May there be 70 more and many more after that um, to all the people at Adelaide Zivila Croatia in their pre-season. Sorry. Yeah, so, sorry, Josip. I was going to say it looks like the graphic is working, um, so we okay. can we can put photos up. And there's the round one fixtures for the state league um, one competition. Unfortunately, um, Adelaide Croatia were relegated from the NPL last season, but hopefully, yeah. this is their campaign to get back into the top flight in South Australia. Yeah, They're at home to Adelaide Victory, so all you Adelaide Croats, make sure on Saturday to get out to the Croatian Sports Centre, magnificent facility there at uh, Gepps Cross. Uh, yeah. Kickoff there is at 3 p.m. Um, and um, oh, I don't know if they've got any affiliation to the Melbourne Victory, Adelaide Victory, or is it just name, just uh, the uh, name? I think it's just someone using a name, mate. <laughs> yeah. Um, and um, so yeah, really, really get 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 out there and support yeah. the boys in red. Great. Over then to Western Australia and Gwellop uh, experienced another uh, loss, unfortunately, in their preseason night series. This time of the heartbreak, uh, leading one nil and then copying a couple of uh, goals uh, to to go out the lose the uh, the losers on this round, and um, uh, that was up against uh, Jundalup. Western Knights though uh, had another had a win on their night series, uh, another one against uh, Fremantle City. Now they face Swan United on Saturday at 7 p.m. at Hartfield Park again. And so we remind the, the faithful out in Western Australia and Perth, get out there and support the Western Knights as well, as well as Gwillopers in their night series games too. Uh, we can't go past the fact that uh, Western Knights is hosting the Bill and Orch, uh, anniversary celebration of Haydook Split. And uh, there the details up on the screen. Get in touch with the Croatian Community Centre and Dean Zlendich and Ned Cecic and book your tickets. Uh, we'll head over to Queensland, mate. Jump right over to the other side of the country. We'll talk a little bit about Gold Coast Knights who hosted Brisbane Knights in their first leg of the Johnny Message Cup, where it's a mix of uh, overage players, taking out with a 4-2 win. And the NPL men for Gold Coast Knights had a massive 3-0 win over Brisbane Raw NPL outfit in their pre-season cup. Uh, so well done to the Knights there. There we go. A, a combined photo there of the Gold Coast Knights and the Brisbane Croatia. I think they're called the Sunnyside Knights or something uh, like yeah, that. Yeah, Sunnyside's a previous name that they previous had. Previous name is yeah, it? Yeah, that's right. And Rockley and United as well. Yeah, so. so they're known as Brisbane yep. Knights now. Um, mm. gr yeah, some... Uh, some some, it's, it's good to see, you know, some of the older blokes getting in on the action. Geez, they look fit. Some of those guys look like they could... Pull the pull the boots Look, on for I, the first I, team. I tell you, I what. bumped into a few of them the night before at a cafe. Uh, you know, uh, as you do around the Broad Beach area, that's 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 the go. And um, you know, they were pumped. They were ready. Yeah. They were ready for the match, and clearly they were because the four two win uh, was obvious. Uh, but uh, yeah, they're seniors uh, at at night at Gold Coast Knights with their three 0 as displayed there. Uh, but speaking of Brisbane Knights, they had their opening round of the Australia Cup uh, with a nice two 0 win over Karina. Nice, so, and it, and overall, the club had some fantastic results through their uh, over thirty fives and their women's as well. So good to see that they're ramping up their preseason uh, with some good hit outs. Now, moving on to Newcastle, a lot happening with Newcastle Croatia. First of all, let's talk about the um, they've got a trial game coming up uh, this weekend. I think it is, or, or that no, was last weekend. That How was did last that go? Week, actually, mate, yep. 
Uh, well, that one I think was a, was wasn't a, a bright uh, ending to the game. So we won't focus on that. But what we will focus on is the opportunity for the two steel cities to come together. Tonch, Newcastle, yeah. Croatia, taken on South Coast United, both sometimes referred to as the 1984 Cup because both clubs were really established in 1984. Um, so they're taking on uh, South Coast United. And South Coast United on the same day is celebrating their uh, – or having their opening uh, pre-season launch. So uh, a good time for Newcastle Croatia to head down the highway, the Princess Highway, and go celebrate some um, with their friends on the uh, southern side of the Sydney coast there. Yeah, uh, the activities will take place 3 p.m. at Ian McLellan Park. Uh, Speaking of Newcastle Croatia, though, they also had a big signing announcement today. Jake McGuinness from Edgeworth FC, from the Northern New South Wales NPL, has decided to join Newcastle Croatia. Big announcement because that's about five different leagues in, uh, different <laughs> from where, where, he's, where he was playing. So um, I dare say he'll have a massive impact for the, for the club. Uh, there you go. Um, so that's this Saturday, February 19, 3 p.m. at Ian McClellan Park. South Coast United, a.k.a. Wollongong, Croatia, taking on Newcastle, Croatia in the uh, Steel Six is the inaugural Steel City Cup. That's fantastic. That's a great initiative and um, look forward to more of that um, in years to come as well. Um, now, before we do go on, I do have to make a mention of the Gorspich Bears, who were our very, very first club, Josip. And um, you know, first club in focus, and uh, they are organising a friendly um, to Gippsland, and that's happening this weekend. Um, now, the lunch is going to be held at the Morwell Dinamo Club, which is the Gippsland Croatian club. Um, a, a, a brilliant, a brilliant initiative. They're hoping to make this an annual thing as well. They'll be taking on Terralgan City at Har Harold Preston Park. Uh, that's 5 p.m. this Saturday. Um, and as I said, um, followed later by the House of Frank. <laughs> I don't know what that means, the House of Frank. And then Sutradan Ruchak at the um, Morwell Dinamo Club. Um, so that's that's brilliant. And, you know, hopefully in uh, weeks to come, or we might even get someone from the Gorse Beach Bears to drop us a, a line and tell us um, how it went. But uh, a, a great initiative. There is a very... That's got to do with Frankie Jovanovic, maybe. Who could knows? be, I don't know. Could be. family is very... Um, very present at the uh, well, Gorspich Bears. Well, we've got the Gorspich Bears uh, coach in the comments section, Maxi Santich. So in the comments section, Maxi, maybe you might be able to uh, put something on and uh, uh, enlighten us a little bit more about that. But a uh, great initiative yeah. there. Could you um, imagine that bus ride? How good oh, would that be? Oh, mate. There'll be squeeze boxes and music <laughs> happening. I don't know if they'll get off the bus. I, I, yeah, I don't know actually. Do they actually have a Gorse Beach Bears bus like that? I'm not too sure. But uh, uh, if um, not, you know what? Sponsors, get on board. Looks like yeah. great. it's got a great look about it. Yeah, yeah um, you're moving along. What else have, What else is happening around in the um, Australian Croatian South football Wales. community? Yeah, still in New South Wales. And Sydney United had a good 3-2 win over Hakoa. Uh, so, yeah, old rival, a name that we probably don't hear too often anymore uh, from our old NSL days. But good to see the, the guys got a 3-2 win there. And the club's also looking for some help in a working bee coming up. So uh, reach out to the committee and get yourself involved in a bit of a clean-up and preparations for the season ahead. In Denzel Park, in the, in the same vicinity, uh, is also uh, expressing um, interest, uh, expressions of interest for players. So, uh, if you're looking for to play in that south, uh, in that southwest corridor, um, yeah, reach out to Denzel Park and get yourself a, a jersey to join the team. Now we've got a little bit of footage here. We're going to try and play this footage, and so hopefully it will work. Um, from the um well, there we go. We've got um, footage from the um, uh, North Geelong Geelong Addy Cup game. Yeah. Uh, I'm wondering if, if footage is coming are up. Able to see it up. Yep. It looks like um, yeah. I think it's just a red screen, huh? No. Yeah. For whatever reason, our video is just not working uh, today. It Unfortunately, go, it's not going to happen. In it's a in a in, in announcing news too, still in Sydney, mate. King Tom, they announced they released their uh, tournament logo. Uh, and it was a really bright looking and uh, quite architecturally designed type logo uh, with recognition to the to the checkers and also the uh, the harbor bridge with a nice King Tom facial feature on there. I don't know if you got that uh, image ready to display, Tonch. No, I haven't, unfortunately. <laughs> no. Okay. Yeah, we had a the gremlins there. We'll... Oh, goodness me. No Muka, worries, Muka Borgia tonight, but oh, well, what do you we'll, do? We'll continue on. Warrington. Warrington's uh, just announced this week that they 
putting their junior allocations together. So if you haven't got your information just yet, get onto the social pages at Wellington Croatia and make sure you've got your information. Last week's uh, guest, Hurstville, and I really enjoyed that session with Hurstville and discussing where they're at, where they've come from and what they're building towards. Uh, aside from their preparation and the upcoming Martin Knezovic Cup, uh, I did notice throughout the week a bit of a focus on their female teams. And, uh, you know, we, we couldn't just fit everything in in one conversation. But when you think, when I think back, think to their women's team, they've got Dean Chulina involved. And we talked about, you know, Richie Plesher and Ante Chovic and a, and a myriad of others. And when you think about Dean, Jason, Branko Chulina, that wealth of knowledge and experience to share at a club like Hurstville, it's any wonder they're going from strength to strength. Um, so well done to Dean for putting his hand up and, and coaching the, the females, female teams there. The juniors, I think, is in the under 16s or 14s area. I can't remember exactly. But uh, he'd, he'd have an encyclopedia of knowledge to refer to as well with Branco and D and Jason on hand, who I bumped into recently and had a coffee with in um, Gold Coast and could have listened to them for hours and talk stories. So, um, yeah, good luck to uh, Hurstville. There, there's a bit of a splash page there for some of the uh, call-out for female players to join up. So reach out to Ma Marina Chovic, who will organise yourselves to get involved. All the details are there on the screen, making sure uh, you take on board there um anything else happening a little bit more we'll go, we'll go to act mate uh so a, in canberra canberra fc took on south coast united uh from Wollongong uh, last week uh gave them a bit of a touch up at seven two win so uh still preparing for their season canberra croatia is and their friends over the road at o'connor knights took on gungalan and had a, had a draw with their men and 23s that uh, pretty much wraps up the, the coverage from around the country, Tonch. Well, we were going to have a little bit of um, a, a break now, um, but unfortunately, it's like like I said, we're just not having any luck with our, our videos tonight. Um, with our adverts, we really apologise, but we will be running those adverts throughout the week um, on our Facebook page. So do make sure that you um, do take heed of our um, advertisers. Macron Victoria um um absolutely fantastic kit macron actually sponsors three of the croatian um first division clubs now Hajduk split um enkar shibenik and now hrvatski yeah. dragovoljats um as well and they also do enkar bunker down in melbourne as well a little known community cl uh, club down there um a good bunch of blokes um um, hopefully we'll get them on the show in weeks to come but um they've got um, a very good um i think it's a young uh, futsal futsal yeah. element to their um their club yeah. operation so uh um i would like to know find out a little bit more about that but um slavi check studio architecture as you said um yosip um mate the designs are absolutely mind-boggling you gotta uh -huh. see it to believe it and and robert does tell me he goes architecture has no boundaries unlike the uh premiers in in australia with their various COVID <laughs> boundaries and rules and that we'll leave that Arch alone mate <laughs> does not have any boundaries so even though he's in wa um he can do work for you anywhere around the country and um obviously plema app um i was i was on the during the week i jumped on I the saw, plema I saw app. you pop up with a few things mate. yeah you know what it's 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 a brilliant little setup it's it's you know obviously for like a, a, anything that's happening in the community um you can network with people croatians yep. from canada america croatia proper um headset bosna you just you name it there's a you can connect with people it's a great little social network you know what tool. i know there's been a bit of interest in recent times because of the borders and whatnot but uh people have been looking at how do i move to croatia Yes. You, you reach out to this, the community people on these pages in Plymouth, and people will actually give you bits yep. of information, advice of what, where to go, how to how to set yourself up in in major towns or, or you know accommodation and things like that. So, a handy tool to have, and congratulations to the designers of it because it's really well laid out too. I, I recommend you jump on and and download the Plymouth app. Um, and how, how much you want to be involved in it or how little you want to be involved in it, it's up to you um, purely. But it's going to be a talk fest tonight. We've got so much to get through. Let's talk now about Croatia and what is happening in Croatia. 
My word, it just gets get gets better and better and better. And uh, look, we'll, we'll we'll start with the HNL first up. Um, the results very very quickly because there's so much to get through. Yeah. Um, so the results of the round just played by Yossip. Did you want to go very very quickly through yeah, that? Yeah. Look well. That, you can touch on that first that one. First one. Match that fixing. Blew me away. Five nil touch up. Uh, Dragovoyats and Shubinik. Get Dragovoyats. <laughs> Yeah, and it won all, Lokomotiva and Istra. So that was, uh, no, no doubt, a, a very uh, nail-biting affair. Dinamo uh, just got over the top of Gorica, and Gorica is proving to be a real thorn in the side for many for many now. Uh, Hajduk got away from Slavon and Belupo, uh, so that's a nice convincing win for them. And then Osijek rounded it out with a 1-0 win over the Eka, which would now start to make the top battle even more interesting for those clubs like your OCX and the Echo who haven't got the greatest goal difference. Points start to count a hell of a lot, right? You've got Dynamo with that big thumping 30 plus goal difference and a game in hand. They're the ones to catch, but when you look at second, third, fourth, um, everyone's fighting away for a UEFA spot there. It's just going to be a hell of a grandstand finish. Yeah, absolutely. Look, look. Um, at the moment, we've got, you know, uh, it, it is a battle between the top four. Uh, Rijeka did drop point, um, drop points, but, you know, look, they're not totally out of it. Osijek, on the other hand, the euphoria. We talk about the euphoria at, at split and with Hajduk as well, um, with Nikola Kalinic being signed on. And that, that forward line now is just amazing. Now, Krovinovic didn't play against Slavin Belupo. Apparently, him and Lovre Kalinic had high temperature, fever. So okay. they, um, I'm told it wasn't um, um, COVID. So they did sit it out. But, you know, when Krovinovic comes back, he's that classic number 10 now. Livaya has been pushed forward along with um, Kalinic. Then you've got the young guns, Buk, um, Ljubicic, um, um, Sahiti now as well, coming back and played a, a great game. That is an unbelievable side. But Osijek, overnight, on the last day of the transfer um, uh, season recruited Christian Lovric, who is outside of the top four, probably one of the most exciting attackers. He he comes from Gorica, um, and the, um, uh, the the arrival that this guy got was just absolutely insane. Um, you know, do yourself a favor and and, and go. Um, either on YouTube or what you're not, and see some of the um, the, the footage. Um, Croatians, they love their flares, and I'm not talking about the 1970s version. Um, <laughs> they had young, old, male, female, all ripping out the flares underneath the um, Osijek stands, and um, they are very, very, very euphoric. They believe that they can um, go ahead and, you know, win the cup and win the um, league, and um, Lovric's parting words to the Osijek faithful was, we're going for both trophies. And, um, you know, one of the supporters afterwards said, you know, no player has ever been, you know, um, received the way Christian Lovric was in Osijek. So, mate, um, yep. all we now need, Josip, is we need Dinamo to beat Sevilla early Friday morning in the in the European um, League, I think it is. I think it's called, is it? Europa. Europa. Europa League, yeah. yeah. There's so many leagues are happening at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> um but apart after that, that's Friday morning. Um, yep. Let's go through some of the games in round 24. Yep. So we've got Godisa taking on uh, Slavian Belupo on Saturday. Uh, it, then on Sunday, we start off with Dragovoyats and Hayduk Split. Watch out, Tonch. Dragovoyats. They might oh, be coming mate. at you, mate. They're going to make <laughs> you, make you panic a little. <laughs> well, it's it's like Rijeka, uh, Rijeka Part 2, isn't it? Apparently, 10 players from Rijeka, Rijeka's youth team, including the coach, have made the switch to Dragovoyats. Now, there is a rule that you can have a maximum, I think it's of six players that can be loaned out to any one particular club. Now, um, uh, a lot of those players now have actually broken their contracts with Rijeka and actually signed with the Dragovoyats. Mate, yeah. it's a, it's an interesting topic, probably one that we... And if you, Look, if you do follow the, the Croatian League um, and if, you, if you've got an opinion on that, you know, um, Hrvatski Dragovoy, it's effectively becoming the filiala to uh, to NK Rijeka. What do you think? Good, bad, um, not so sure? Pop it in our comment section. would really yep. love to know what you're thinking. But, uh, yeah, moving along. My, uh, my match of the round, uh, only because they've had trouble with them throughout the year, is Istra and Osijek. So yeah. Osijek has struggled against Istra for some reason. And um, this will be, in my opinion, the match of the round. Moving on to Rijeka and Shubenik on Monday. And also on Monday, the Zagreb derby with uh, what 
some people refer to as the affiliate club for Dinamo Zagreb yeah. and K Lokomotiva. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Um, let's move in very quickly to the second division. The big one here was Varaždin, top place Varaždin taking on second placed Orient. In fact, sorry, flipped around. Orient were the top place. Varaždin was the second place. That's now changed because Varaždin, good crowd. Um, once again, go on YouTube, see some of the um, the um, the highlights. I think there's a crowd of about two and a half, three thousand, or something like that. Awesome. Not too sure, but yeah. um, and really, we know that for, for Croatian league, that's quite a substantial audience, right? Yeah, absolutely. And even yeah. for the second division, I mean, for the second division, that's pretty good. Yes, um, Varaždin did open the gates basically and said, you know, free entry um, as as a, as a sign of thanks for their fans. But um, yeah, look, a top game. Some um, some really good players in that second division. I tell you what, um, and and there's the um the ladder now, as we can see. So only one team gets promoted. Um, Varajd in there, audience in second place. Rute Rudesh from Zagreb in in third spot, and Croatia's Miavci are an interesting side. They're from Imotski. Yeah, the um, Imotchani, mate. Uh, Imotchani, actually... and one of the best facilities in the second division on two sides it of the is? ground. They've got. A phenomenal little little stadium. I tell you call what. Out to, uh, call out to one of my Adelaide mates, Domo Todoric. His cousin, <laughs> Mladen, is involved at Croatia Zmijavci. Uh, so if he can get this over to him and uh, share it with him, <laughs> that'd be great. Actually, I might just send it myself to Mladen. He's a he's a wonderful character and he, he and he's he's a veteran of the war as well. So he's is that right? Yeah, a lot of passion. Oh, Imochani, they're very passionate people. That's for sure. Um, now the bottom five. Um, will get relegated at season's end. So it's going to be, a, um, a, 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 I think, a 12-team or 14-team competition next year. Um, and then the year after that, it will end up being a 12-team um, second division. And then we're going to be seeing a, um, a unified third division. So at the moment, there are five divisions in Croatia, five third divisions, and they will become a unified um, single uh, third division next year. So a lot happening in Croatia Huge stuff. Now, jumping across the border, Josip, um, they're not happening. Well, they, they won't be um, back in action until next week. But the three Croatian clubs in the Bay Prva Liga. Um, so, ooh, wrong Good, one. Uh, I think it was this one is. Yep, yep. that's one. There Zrinski, we go. And Posse, yep. Yeah, Zrinski doing really well. Um, they've got a great side. They've had a few players leave and a few players arrive. But, um, mate, at the halfway mark of the season, to have opened up a um, 12 commanding 12-point gap. gap, I think yep. that's a record, actually. I, Puts them in a great position for the uh, for the... For the UEFA spots, you know, yeah, let's, you know, that let's not even try and dream about the Champions League, but uh, with UEFA spots for for them, and you know, what, what a fantastic achievement that would be in it, in itself, and and likewise, another fantastic achievement would be for Pusisha to nudge away from that drop zone, yeah, and, so and get, in, get into some safety. Yeah, Pusisha newly promoted. Um, if they can survive this first year, um, it'll be a huge, huge effort on their behalf. Um, and Shiroki Brieg, the other Croatian team, uh, they're in fifth spot. But look, you know, they could quite easily jump uh, you know, up as high as third position and, and those yeah. top three positions, as you said, lead to some form of European competition. Yeah. So, Just um, based on the way they've been, uh, lack of scoring has, has held them back this year. Um, so they haven't been able to sort of shoot away when, they've, when they have led. They've, you know, they've just gotten over the line. Um, and when they when they have when they have lost, they've also just lost by real narrow margins. So, not a lot in it, but they're just not able to push away and try and get some gaps between them and Zhuya. Yeah. Now we're hoping to get um Steve um Stephen um Topalovic on as soon as possible. Um, we, we are running behind time. We always seem to be running behind time, Yossi, because there's just so much to get through, isn't there? <laughs> it's fit. Look, it's great that the clubs that are sharing this information yeah. and we can bring it together on a, in a national level, which is what, what we're trying to do and keep it all relative to, to ourselves and keep us excited about our seasons to come. Yeah. And um, we've, we've got... Um, so we've got Stephen Topalovic ready to join us very shortly. He is in right. the room. We're waiting for him just to jump on. But in the meantime, the NPL Victoria season kicks off this weekend. Um, mate, I'm so excited about this. I cannot wait. We've, we, yeah. in Victoria, we've been waiting, I think, something like 200 days since the last time a game was played. Um, this Actually, it, it all kicks off tomorrow night with um, the Gritzi in action, South Melbourne Hellas versus Heidelberg United. That's yep. at Lakeside. And um, and then it's our own derby, the Croatian derby, kicking off at 7.30 p.m. at Frank Hollihan Soccer Complex. 
where we're going to have the um, um, the hosting Dandenong City taking on the Melbourne Knights. And um, we have now joining us on the screen um, the, the captain of Dandenong City, Stephen Topalovic. Stephen, very, very warm welcome to you. How are you? Good. Thank you for having me on. I'm very well, thanks. Hey, Topa. Uh, yeah, mate, it's good to see hey, you. Hey, how you going? How you boys going? You well? Yeah, we're good, mate. Thanks. Apart from the fact we've been having all sorts of gremlins tonight with the internet and what you're not, um, that hasn't been exactly fun. But uh, nonetheless, um, there we go. Nonetheless, uh, we have got you on the on the thing. And you're coming to us live from the Dandy City dressing rooms. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. I've got um, – it's the jersey presentation is on tonight. So I've just ducked uh -huh. out for a few minutes to have a chat Thanks. with you boys. So, Good work, man. No, that's all right. What do you got stored in the? What do you got stored behind you there? You got any special liquids that get you going for the game, mate? Oh, no, I'll leave the special liquids at home, so I don't bring them here. <laughs> I've got to keep them cold and fresh in the freezer. <laughs> Good stuff. Now, now, uh, Stephen, um, before we get on to the uh, Friday night's game and before we get on to, the, I guess, the season proper, um, we're having nightmares with our video footage. And I was going to run a great little video clip of yourself. Now, this is available on the Dandenong City right. Facebook page of you introducing the new kits. You talk about the kits. Um, mate, the way you describe right. it, the way you describe it is absolutely colourful. It's very, you, uh, you know, have you, got a, have you got a background in fashion design? design or something <laughs> no i got a, i don't really have a background in fashion design i've just been wearing clothes for a very long time mate, so, <laughs> um, have so the experience comes from there no, that's yeah. the way no, stuff, so, mate. apparently you've been saying it says something like uh feels pretty lightweight nice cut around the neck and it feels very stealth now that I have it with that word stealth. Now does that mean you're going to be looking at you know penetrating opposition defenses in a very stealthy kind of a way, almost like camouflage or whatever? But uh, uh what's the, what's the tactics for the city? What has Mickey C, Mickey Cholina, got you guys um uh, playing? Uh, well, no, nah, Mickey C has been good. I, obviously, last year he came in and uh, he really did change things. Obviously, he was only around for, what was it, five matches. I think we had two wins, two uh, two losses and a draw in there. Um, so we started to show a little bit of form. Obviously, COVID came around and shut everything down. But it was nice to have a whole preseason with him. Um, him and Steve have been really good. We've, uh, I feel like the team's really fit. I think that... Uh, we're going into the season with majority of a full squad, so yeah, it's been good. It's 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 been nice actually. Preseason seemed a little bit shorter than what it normally does, which is a good thing. I always think. Mm, mm. That's the way, man. Now, in in, in preparation, you, there have obviously been some departures and some signings. Uh, last week, we we announced uh, we shared that information that the club announced about John McShane coming in, and with my. my, my previous experience watching him against North Geelong and seeing how resolute he is. How much of an influence has he already had into the squad since his arrival? Yeah, we we were pretty desperate for a little bit of experience up top. And um, yeah, John actually gave me a buzz. I was just sitting at, a, I think I was at my in-laws house and he, he just texted me on the phone saying, hey, what's the situation like a dandy? He goes, you know, I'd be on moving down closer to the area. I'd be interested in coming in. So I, yeah, I got in touch with Mickey and said, listen, I, go, I think we've got a, I, I think I found a young player for you <laughs> um, <laughs> that might be interested in joining the team. So yeah, look, it ended up working out really well for all parties. He obviously for him in terms of the travel. And like I said, we were, we were a little bit thin in that area over the last couple of years. Um, and it's good. Yeah, the more experience that we have to get, uh, get, get ourselves, I guess, away from the bottom, which we've been sort of lingering around over the last couple of years, the better. Yeah, that's the way, man. Now, you've got another striker from Port Melbourne, Johnny Quall, who comes in, the 27-year-old attacker as well. So it's a, it's a very new-look um, attacking um, uh, lineup there. But also, on, on, now, at the other end of the field, it was just announced today that you've got a, uh, a new goalkeeper as well from uh, an Argentinian by the name of Pedro Formosa. Tell us a bit more about these two new That's recruits. Uh, yeah, well, Johnny's Johnny came actually to training a couple of years ago, um, and I was thinking we were going to sign him then, and whatever for whatever reason, he didn't end up staying. Um, so it's good to have him at the club. He's a real live wire up front, um, good injection of pace, he's strong. Uh, he's you know he's at a good age as well. I think he's about twenty six or twenty seven. So I think it's um, I think it, it, it's it's good for him, a good opportunity for him to sort of really stamp his foot, I guess, in a in a Premier League team here, and then. Um, Obviously, with Pedro as well, he's come down. Uh, one of our players, Gavin Denise, they used to play together at River Plate. 
back in the day. So they've been chatting over the phone and he's been interested in Australia. And yeah, there you yeah, go, yeah. put two and two together. And yeah, it's worked out actually quite the nice. The Kowal family seems to have an endless supply of uh, talent coming through. They're, they're into the A-League, into the NPL and different states of the NPL too. So uh, I think it's a, it's a name to watch out for. No, a talented family, I can tell you that much. Yeah, that's for sure. Um, uh, we, we heard uh, we heard Stevie G talk during the week a, a little bit about uh, his excitement, looking forward to to round one, being that it's a sister club derby with Melbourne Knights. Um, overall, around the dressing room and, and this week, building up for Friday night, uh, uh, exciting opener. How, how's how's the mood and uh, anything that you think we should be watching out for for any particular players? Uh, the mood's good in the dressing room. I mean, it's. I think the, the best feeling of the season is always that week before round one. I think um, the emotion and the anticipation, uh, uh, the boys' fitness levels, excitement, everything sort of peaks at the moment because you don't know what's what to expect coming into round one. So um, form doesn't really matter, uh, I guess, uh, and everyone's playing a little bit off adrenaline come, uh, coming into that first game. It obviously... This year, usually we play against Andy Thunder, which is a massive game for us here. Um, this derby is slightly different. It gets against the Melbourne Knights. Um, but, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, unfortunately, you know, one of us, you know, it could be a draw, but, you know, one of us have to win, and I'm hoping that on our our home turf, it's us. Now, mate, um, I don't know, are we at liberty to, to disclose this, but there's a bit of a bombshell announcement, really. Um, not a good one, not a good one, unfortunately, and it involves you. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> um, are, are we? At yes. To say, yeah. Um, so what? Um, so you can tell us about what what's going on there. Oh yeah, mate. I've um, I've hurt myself actually three weeks ago. I had an awesome preseason. I've, everything's been going really well, and I actually said to my wife on the way to the game against Bentley, I said, "Feeling really good." I go, "Looking forward to the game." I go, "I'm enjoying myself." I go, "Hopefully, I just come out of the game unscathed and move on to next week." And there you go. And probably about the forty third minute, I ended up. Uh, just falling badly on my foot and I've got a uh, bruised fat pad in my heel. So uh, I'm out indefinitely at the moment. I um, oh, was on crutches okay. and I've sort of tried to train and everything. So it's, yeah. Yeah, it's just not looking good at the moment for me. Um, but we'll take it, uh, uh, you know, one week at a time. It's one of those ones that could just get better overnight or it could linger on for a few months. So I'm hoping it's, um, yeah, I'm hoping it just sort of gets better as soon as possible. But I'll yeah, I'm be... cursing, man. I'm yeah. really... No, it's I'm, not good. It's, uh, it's... Uh, yeah, I'm so upset that I'm missing that round one, um, especially against Knights and in front of the home crowd. I'll always enjoy playing in front of people and, you know, Friday night yeah. under the lights. I'm, I'm gutted, but, yeah, obviously it's, it's, it leaves an opportunity for one of the young boys to come in yep. and, yeah, that would be good. Man. Maybe push me to get back into the team. Well, yeah. mate, I think I, I think I can speak on behalf of the entire Australian Croatian community. We wish you a very, very speedy recovery, um, and hopefully, we'll be able to see you, um, you know, pulling on that 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 nice um, tight, uh, nicely cut the uh, Dandenong City Lajaya um, um, top. So, because um, we definitely want to see you um, on the field. In, They've done a great action. job, Lajaya, on those kids. I tell you that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know I've talked them up, so I want to get it on and show everyone where you know what I can do in it as well. So oh, we'll see can, what happens. Yep. Get to your modeling days, mate. Yeah. <laughs> now, yeah, when you, I know. Well, it's, yeah. it's still, I'm still, I've still got a couple of jobs here and there, but I'm getting a bit older now. So, yeah. <laughs> just just so, test that bicep a bit more. <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, yeah, no, no, sorry. I've got to get out of the cut. <laughs> I, I, I hear Robert Yakovlevich down, the president down at um, um, Dan Nong City, is looking for a mascot, a match day mascot or someone like that, you know, someone who looks good in the uh, in the uh, Dan Nong City kit. Is that maybe a possibility? <laughs> well, all jokes aside, though, are, are you still going to be involved with the, with the um, team? I mean, you are the captain, yeah? Yeah, man, of course, man. I'm going to be there. Um, I'll be there for the warm-up and uh, yeah. in the change room. Uh, um, I'll give my two cents to boys and try to I much. You know, I love this club, man. It means everything to me. I support them as a boy. Um, I've come back here uh, as an adult and achieved already a lot with the club and getting promoted. And you know, basically, I live. I've grew up in this area. I live around the corner, mate. I'm just, uh, there's no place else I'll be playing. You know, for the rest of my life. So, I um, I want to achieve something with the boys. And like I said, it, it hurts a little bit not being there, but uh, on the field. But I'll be there anyway, nonetheless. Hey, hey, mate, I know you've been around, in and around that senior environment uh, for about 14 years now, mate, and the passion you displayed for that club is exemplary. So well done to you. Yeah. Here's a little chance for you to give a call out to the faithful to come out on Friday night in massive numbers. 
It would be nice, obviously, with uh, Robbie coming in as president and Ivy, um, his brother-in-law, as the vice president. I think uh, it, it's a good time and a good chance for people to reconnect with the club. Obviously, they're at a different generation as well than than what Tony was, and uh, there's a lot of other, uh, I guess, friends and, and families and young families and stuff that um, have been maybe untapped for the last couple of years that might be eager to come back. Uh, with the change of kickoff times as well at 7.30, I think it's uh, it's a master stroke. Uh, so, you know, if people were thinking that the match is a little bit late and whatever it is down here, it does get a little bit cold during the winter time. But, um, mm. yeah, it's going to be a nice night on Friday. And, you know, while we got the good weather and the daylight savings. Absolutely. The, um, and the world-famous yeah, pork neck uh, rolls. It would be nice to get the community back. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Well, that's that's on, on um, Friday night. Um, if, if For those that are maybe out of town or, or certainly – um, those that are unable to go to the game, um, they'll be able to watch the live stream of the game on on Clutch, uh, on, on the new Clutch app. Um, and I think there's going to be the New South Wales, the South Australian, and I do believe is it... Queensland's the, there. Is it Queensland as well? Yeah, I'm not too sure. Um, that's, yeah, so all those um, um, NPL leagues will be televised on or streamed live so that's that's awesome Can, cannot wait Stephen. wishing you all the very best personally and to the club as well for season 2022 we'll look forward to maybe even getting danny nong city as our club in focus in one of our upcoming um, episodes as well all the best thank Stephen. you very much for having me thank you boys appreciate yeah, it mate. Um, that was um, that was Stephen Topalovic. Um, he, the captain of Dandenong City. Unfortunately, unfortunately, some bad news there on the yeah. eve of the new NPL season. And um, he's a lovely guy. Hopefully, he's going to be back in action very, very shortly. Um, and now, joining us straight all the way from the hallowed surface of Summer Street Night Stadium, um, it's going to be none other than the um, coach. Of um of the Melbourne Knights, Steve Babich. Steve, thank you very much for joining us on the Oz Crow Soccer Show. How are you? Mm. Oh, audio. Very very poor audio for this um, for some reason. Hello, can you see hear us? We've got the picture. We just don't have the audio. Oh, that's better. Hello, uh, better. Can you hear me? Oh, that's much better. Now we can yeah. hear. You. <laughs> Seem to be having a lot of inter we have a lot of uh, a lot of technology issues happening tonight. I don't know what yeah, is going must on. Be must be the full moon that's out. Here we go. Must be. Must be. Yep. Can you hear me, boys? Yeah, we we can. Sure thing. Yeah, there you go. I can hear you guys. All right then, Steve. Welcome to the Oz Crow Soccer Show, mate. Um, it has been a frenetic off season. It's been a long off season. It's been something like two hundred days since the last game was played in the NPL Victoria competition. Uh, how how are the boys travelling? You've had a lot of new recruits. Let's We'll talk about that a little bit later. But just the mood in the dressing room ahead of the new season, how would you sum it up at the moment? Uh, real positive, real positive. Um, I think all the boys um, are really itching to get going and, and start round one. Um, and obviously, I think you said before, it's 200 days or, or, or so, something like that, since the last competitive game. So... I think if they weren't itching to get back into it and, and start the real stuff, it would be a problem. But um, all in all, real, real happy with the group and everyone's been really, really positive. Excellent. Hey, Beba, uh, with the uh, build-up for the season, mate, uh, it, we're bringing in some new players and unfortunately parting ways with, with some others. Have you tried to implement anything different this time around compared to last season? Um, look, I think in terms of, I think there's, there, there has been, I think, a number of departures from last season's squad um, for, for various reasons. And I think you wanted to go into that later. Um, but it just, from my perspective, more sort of evolving of, on where we left off last season, getting better at what we've done well, um, trying to be the best in the competition in certain aspects of the game and improving you know, improving in, in certain areas where we fell short last season. So um, I don't think there's a massive change in terms of philosophy or style. Um, what we wanted to do last year will continue in terms of trying to be proactive, aggressive, um, trying to play football. What's, what's pleasing to our supporters, um, they'll definitely continue. 
Now, some of the recruits that you have got, they're quite attacking minded. Um, a fella, Steve Sokol, I think is his name from, from Western Australia. Is he Croatian? Is, I mean, Sokol Falcon translates to Falcon, but <laughs> is he of Croatian descent? Steve Sokol is his name around here at the <laughs> moment, but uh, <laughs> no, nah, he's, he's not he's not Croatian. Um, he's part, I think, American from his dad's side and Indonesian, actually, from his mother's side. Interesting. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, there you yeah. go with a surname like that. Now he's he he was what the 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 uh, golden boot, wasn't he, uh, in the Western Australian NPL competition? Um, and he joins another attacking player who was signed just today, um, pretty much very fresh. Uh, Lionel Masudi, is that right? Twenty four year old striker. Do we do we know much about? Can you tell us a bit about these two two new recruits? Yep. So um, obviously, Steve Sokol came from Inglewood in in WA. Mm -hmm. um, he did. I think he scored eighteen odd goals last season in the league and ended up as a top goal scorer. Um, he was someone I was tracking for a while last year while the, while this, our season was still going ahead, and I made contact with him fairly early on. I don't think our season had even finished when I made contact with him initially. Um, and I was really eager to get him across. And I think from his perspective, he was excited for a new sort of chapter um, in his footballing journey. And we we done that deal very early on in the piece, which I was really happy about. Um, but in terms of his characteristics, he's quick, he's prolific in front of goals, um, real good attitude, real good character. Um, in terms of Lionel, uh, Lionel was one that I think he actually started as a 16-year-old back um, at Murray United originally, mm -hmm. from memory. Um, went across, spent some time at South Melbourne in the youth team before moving overseas. And he spent some time in the UK um, at various levels over there and returned late last year. I think he was actually in Ge at Geelong Soccer Club in MPL 3 for you know nine or ten games last year. I think he missed the window here for MPL. Um, and yeah, he's come across in pre-season um, and we've liked what we've sort of seen of him. Again, tacking minded, um, a lot of pace, aggressive, um, so fits sort of the profile of player we're looking for. Um, and he's another good addition to the squad. Too good. With the um, build up to this this week's uh, this week's weekend's uh, round one opener against Dandy City, we've seen that they've had some uh, some big signings late on in the piece uh, as well, and they're looking like a bit more attacking minded too. How do, how do you see the the big contest occurring? Is and, and where do you think the uh, the main attributes will come out from your team to get you over the line? Yeah, I think um, look, this is a real real difficult. Um, first up clash, um, you know, any derby, especially against the Croatian, the fellow Croatian clubs is all, is always real difficult. Um, I feel looking at their signings and sort of their preparations in pre-season, I, I think they've definitely strengthened from last year. I think they'll be much, much stronger than last season's squad. Um, knowing Mickey, I'm sure they'll be ultra organised and ultra competitive as well. Um, so it's, you know, it's building up to be a real cracker of a game, if you want to say that. Um, yeah, absolutely. In, in terms of, you know, what's gonna, what it's going to take to get the points or, or, or that, you just don't know at this stage. You'll be, you know, it's round one. We haven't played in 200 days. On top of that, it's a derby. Um, anything can happen in this game. And I'm sure that first 20, 30 minutes, it's going to be helter skelter, which is normal in any round one. Um, in particular derby but i think like any any of these games early on it's you know whichever team can find their feet as quickly as possible um and assert themselves you might end up getting the points but yeah it's going to be yeah it's going to be a real tough game one of the um uh, parts of every club that in our community that i really enjoy seeing is the development of youngsters and getting their opportunity to be embraced by the senior squad and seeing young Corlich and Militich come in um uh, you know, obviously lifts the mood for those in and around the under 21s and even the younger ones seeing a pathway that works. Yeah. Um, do, do, you, do you feel like they will be able to be uh, serious co contributors throughout the year? And how have, they yeah. started to, how have they started gelling with the senior group? Yeah, no, I think, look, we sort of uh, saw those boys um, last year applying their trade in the reserves. Um, and throughout the course of last season, on odd occasions, they'd get called up to train with me. Um, firstly, you know, both of them have fantastic attitudes, fantastic characters, really committed and dedicated to 
their profession um, and they both have real big ambitions in terms of making it as footballers. So I invited both of them to come and join us in pre-season to see how they go and see how they sort of take that next step in their journey and both have ticked the boxes from, from every perspective. So in terms of um, merging sort of with the group, there's been no issues, all the boys love them, them two in particular, um, and taking their opportunities in pre-season games when they when they've received them and they've both shown that you know they may not be ready right away but they're definitely not far off being ready and and serious contenders and really making an impact for the club and it's definitely something what um i think this club's always been renowned for and, yeah. and it is providing a pathway for for young young players who are really really want to take that next step in their career so the see. more the merrier, I say. The more the merrier. So we've got yeah, others in the yeah. team as well. Jack Mart's still here as yeah. well. So um, no, it's real good. There's a real good blend of youth and a bit of experience as well. Now, now, Beba, um, we've also now we're looking at the international flavour. So international football is returning, or the international flavour is returning to the Knights. Um, one of those is a, is a Japanese player, Fuki Ishibashi. Now he played for the Manningham Blues in NPL Victoria Two. Uh, what sort of a player is he? Is he more of a, a defensive or attacking-minded player? Yeah, so he's a centre back, uh, Fuki. So he came over. He came across from Japan last season. Um, signed with Manningham in in MPL two. Um, done real well in MPL two. Um, but yeah, te technical centre back, comfortable on the ball, aggressive, quick. Um, ticks a lot of boxes in terms of what I'm looking for out of centre backs. Um, so yeah, we brought him in fairly early in the piece as well and and he's fitting like a glove even though his yeah. english isn't um the best <laughs> but the boys really really have seen uh seems to sort of um yeah grow quite fond of him and, and i think we had a karaoke night i think recently yeah. and he, was, he was he was the number one star when he uh sang a local japanese song so well there you go hopefully he can he's um he's on field um antics can be just as good as his off field but we've also got another uh, a croatian a 24 year old luka Celic, who comes over from shibenik um and we yeah. always get excited as, as, as i suppose as australian croatian fans whenever we hear a croatian player has signed for the knights or or sydney croatia or what you not we get excited uh luka yeah. Celic, now apparently he's um uh, he started off at shibenik in car shibenik um and he played more than 100 league games there over four seasons Tell us more about him. Um, you know, yeah. what can we expect from him? Yeah, so look as uh, look at Selic. I think I don't think it's Selic. Um, Selic, there you go. Yeah, so local boy from Shibnik, um, and he's made the move across. He, he joined the group. I think it was maybe two or three weeks ago now. Um, yeah, so he started off over there in Shibnik. That was his local club. Um, worked his way through the juniors there. Played, I think, eighty odd games in HNL two. Um, was part of the team who got promoted to HNL1 um, and played, I think, various games, I think 10, 11, 12 games in, in HNL1 as, as well um, before he, he was supposed to move to Austria and a contract fell through mm -hmm. before going to Vodice in HNL3, I think it is, for six months and then he's made the jump across to us. Oh, um, so we're fortunate enough, as you know, that you know this club has a lot of contacts all around the world, in particular in Croatia, and, and there was a lot of people out there um, assisting us in, in trying to track down sort of a player what sort of fits what we're looking for. Um, and yeah, Lucas come across. Look at Lucas sort of came across our radar through various contacts. And what's really pleasing was he sort of jumped at the opportunity to come across, and it was sort of a, like from his perspective a no-brainer. He goes, "Yep, yeah. I'm in. When can I come?" And yeah, booked the ticket the next day, and he was on the flight straight out. So there you go. I must yeah. admit, when I when I saw the name, I thought must be a Metkovic connection. Chelich. Yeah, there There's is, a lot there of Chelichers down in Metkovic way, but I guess we, you, you with your parents being a, a Metkovic connection, that's probably sufficient enough now. But yeah, uh, yeah no, uh, I thought so too until I spoke <laughs> to him. <but> <laughs> there um, you go. No. Um, after a uh, big one, after uh, so obviously Friday night huge game, but then the week after that, a bit of a grudge match at home against Avondale. Uh, Friday, yep. uh, Friday week. That's going to be another big one, and it's going to be the first opportunity for um, Knights fans to 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 watch the game at Knight Stadium. Um, how how are the memberships looking? Some great membership categories there for the club. Um, the, is the excitement there um, building up? And obviously, um, want a good result first up. But um, here's an opportunity as well for you to now call on all your fans, supporters, members 
to uh, to attend both Friday night's game, but also the big um, home home clash against Avondale in two weeks' time. Yeah, no, I think um, yeah, we're re really looking forward to playing. Obviously, round two, first game at home against sort of um, arguably probably the best team in, in the competition the last two years. So it'll be a real good test from that perspective to see where we're at and how we've sort of take developed from last year. Um, in terms of the supporters, uh, from my perspective, they're the best going around and, and they came out last year in numbers when they could pre pre the lockdowns. I'm, I'm, I've got no doubt that they'll be back again. Everyone's itching to get back into it. Um, the, the media guys here assure me that the marketing drive started off with a bang. Um, people are coming every day to pick up their memberships. So the more the more they come, the better. It's it's it can be a real cauldron, as you guys know, this this yep. football club, especially at home. And it's definitely um, our supporters are definitely like a 12th man on the field and, and sort yeah. of they'll push across the line in any game, I think. And and on top of that, uh, you know, Friday night, a night stadium, you've got the beer garden, you've got entertainment, you've got food, you've got, you know, kids entertainment area playgrounds, it, it caters for everyone, for families to single. So It's like Wally's know. World, isn't it? It's got everything. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't know where you'd rather be, but there's not many better places than, than here on a Friday night. Yeah. A bit of football. I agree. Be, it's um, wonderful. And you know, run around as a kid, it's, it's awesome. So Absolutely, and especially whilst the weather is good. Now, Joey yeah. Dean, who actually happens to be uh, a, um, from Geelong, an Italian fellow, Joey Giacomazzo, he, in the comments section, he says, I renewed, so pumped, going to get it next Friday. Loves football, loves the nights. You often yeah, see him Joey there. Good um, Joey's well known around the, the traps, and uh, uh, he's heavily involved with Karaya Soccer Club uh, yeah. down Geelong way. Um, Maxi Santic says, plenty of footballing talent coming out of Met Metkovic. Good on you, Maxi. A Always big shout out. Been, yeah. Big shout out to Mariana Jaya from Sydney. Great show, guys. Finally caught a live session. Pause that up from Sydney and um, Joshua Popescu says Samo Newcastle Newcastle Croatia we've got people <laughs> all over the country tuning in mate on behalf of the entire Croatian community here in Australia wishing you all the best for the season ahead Steve and the Knights and uh, you know um, can't can't wait for Friday night can't come uh, soon enough thanks boys thanks for having thanks me. for joining us Bevo. all the best Knights awesome thank you Good on you. That's Steve Babich joining us all the way from the hallowed turf of Knight Stadium. Um, how good was that? You know, we had one guest, Steve Topalovich, from the um, from the um, from the very the, dressing the, room, the dressing room down at uh, Frank Hollihan Reserve, and now we had Beba joining yeah. us from the actual um, Knight Stadium pitch. We're hoping to get Kruni Rajov, and I, he has my tip is Kruni sitting on the Vukovar bar, ready to go. Uh, let's let's hear it from the man himself. Uh, Kruni Rajov joins us. Kruni, how is the Vukovar? Is it the opening of the uh, Vukovar bar, or was that was, that was, that last, was last week? Was it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was last week. We had a bit of a jersey presentation last Thursday night, and, and the Vukovar bar and so forth it was a good night. Yeah. Welcome to the show, Kruni. Thanks, gents. Uh, Kruni, now, first of all, um, as we said, welcome to the Ozcrow Soccer Show. Great to have you on board. There's been a lot of movement at Churchill Reserve. Um, um, you know, a lot of players coming and going. Um, you know, tell us about some of the big, big name signings and also the big departures there. Um, what can Dinamo fans look forward to this year with regards to their senior squad? Well, we definitely, you know had a quick chat after the season last year and we know where we went wrong and where we wanted to fix things and which players we identified in, in areas and we've definitely lost a few we've probably lost about 10 10 or 11 for various reasons moving on and and whatever it may be but in the end of the day we were last on the table last year and it's not a position we'd like to be at and we had to look at things very bluntly and and openly and make the tough decisions sometimes and we've done that and We've moved on and we've brought in five or six new players that we think we can do the job a little bit better. Terrific. I, I, in my in my time, you know, being paying attention to St Albans over the many years, it probably seems like the the busiest preseason in terms of uh, player attraction coming to the club. But you also have the a, additional uh, feature of uh, Michael Grigic returning from injury as well. Yes, absolutely. We we. We sat down and we said, you know, if we can get Michael Gergic back from his injury and, 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 you know, another four or five players, that's where we wanted to go. That's where I want to go as a coach. So he's been, he is huge for, for the team. You know, he's the captain, yeah. he's the leader. He's been there for many, many years. And 
to get him back and hopefully soon enough we'll get another one of our players that only played a couple of games last year, Zelfi, uh, uh, Afghani International. So he's coming back from injury. He shouldn't be too far away. So they're two players that you've had on your list that you haven't been able to use in the last year, mm. which is, is a big... Yeah. Highly influential, Michael, because he, he definitely pops up in those set pieces for you. Um, but as we've seen him over the years, even when we had the pleasure of having him at North Geelong, he just manages to do those one percenters that can save your games too when you've managed to fight your way back into a game. So, uh, and you know, point, points are going to be crucial early on and he's the sort of player that can come into the squad and give you a big lift. Yeah, absolutely. And, and Gergs knows where, where he is in the squad and what he brings to the team. And, and when he's on, he's, he's really, really good. So he's very important. So are, so are the other players. But... Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, he's definitely a, a denimal boy. And yeah, now he. Of, so I was just going Sorry. to say, speaking of grit and performance at, at, a, at a clinch time, you've managed to acquire the services of one Nikola Jurkovic. Ah, oh, you stole to, my thunder. I was about to talk about <laughs> to you. use in the uh, <laughs> use as you please because you can you can cover a lot of uh, different roles for you. Yeah, yeah, a huge addition to to where we want to do and what we want to do. Should I say and. Center half number six, wherever you put him, you know you're going to get a hundred percent. You know he's been he's been in the system for a while. You know he he knows what it's about. A new change, don't know a bit of a change for him. He's been really good in the preseason, so yeah, looking forward to working with him. Now we're not going to talk too much about the private lives of a, of these players, but with Nicola, he's been known to be a little bit sort of hot under ton, uh, the the collar and, and get a red card from here and there. But in the off season, apparently. He's got himself engaged now. Well, does that mean that he's going to be a little bit more gentler, you know, when it comes to, uh, you know, defenders? Or is he still going to be that white line fever and it's the old Nicola that we know that he's going to – nothing's going to get past him one way or another? Is he oh, going to oh, it? <laughs> It's a tough question. We'll see in round one, I guess, because uh, we'll find out. He's been good in the preseason. Yeah. He, he is – He's very passionate. He, he's very hard. He has a lot of white line fever. He's just got to bring it to the, you know, he's just got to be smarter at times how he does things. But you don't want to take those uh, attributes. That no, he has. They're no, the things we've brought him across. And that's why he's here. That's what we want from him. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that, I guess, we, you've got a lot of young players that do come through the ranks. Um, and as a, as a seasoned campaigner, as a, as a coach yourself, how do you, that's that's a really good question that we bring up. How do you sort of maintain that that almost that controlled aggression without getting too enthusiastic? And, and look, you know, some of the times, you know, um, some of these games at MPL Victoria level are very physical. Um, and that's why I love watching MPL Victoria. A-League doesn't have it for me. Um, but how do you put a, put a lid on some of that uh, controlled aggression as a coach? Sometimes, Tonshi, it's a bit hard sometimes. Sometimes... Some players are a little bit, you know, less physical and less aggressive. Some are a little bit more. Like I said before, you don't want to take away mm. those attributes that they bring to the club, but it's all about being smart about you. We've, we've had a lot of discussions how we can be better in our physical ability and, and aggressive ability, yet, you know, keep away from the referees in a certain extent and be smarter, uh, smarter on the ball and off the ball where, you know, you don't get pinged as much. Yeah. And it's being about being, uh, I guess, creating a diversion, are you, Sip? Maybe get the referees. Uh, I, t t I don't know. How, how do we go about doing well, that Nicola, in this day and age? <laughs> like players, like, players like Nicola, too, are very crafty at, um, you know, making yeah. sure that the decisions go their way as well. So it goes both ways, Tunch. Yeah, we don't have the VAR at NPL level yet, do we? Nah, all right. <laughs> no, we don't. We don't. Uh, look, aside from players, uh, you know, when, when I look at your coaching staff, Karuni, um, you know, you'd have to be one of the best coaching staffs going around. You've got your, your assistant in Paul Donnelly, and you've got mm. uh, none other than the well-experienced and uh, one of my favourite coaches going around, Cracker, Robbie Klejcic, yep. and he's been supported by Patrick Mannion. So uh, how's, that, how's that all going internally, the dynamics with the coaching and um, supporting one another? Really, really well. I worked with uh, Rob last year. Rob came on board last year. Uh, Cracker, so got to know him a lot more through 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 the year last year, and he stayed on board, thoroughly enjoyed himself. So it's, it's been really good there. Pat was the the under 19s coach last year, did really well with them in terms of the way we want to play, and so forth. So he's been promoted there, and and Paul Donnelly, yeah, we made a bit of a change in the assistant uh, coach's role last year. We looked we looked to to mix things up a bit, and Paul's name has been on my radar for a while. Uh, haven't known him personally, but 
through a lot of people and we made contact and, and it's gone really, really well up until uh, to now. So really, really excited to be working with Paul. Yeah, good on you. I can say from a former administrator's perspective, when we've, whenever I've looked for coaches, he's always appeared in the top three names that, you know, you've heard players refer yeah. to or past players refer to and then you go, okay, well, I'll look into this one, you know. Yeah. No, no, it's been really, really good. The preseason has been really good. Now, Crooney, the preseason ends officially for for Dynamo on Saturday afternoon, 5.30 p.m. at um, SS Anderson Reserve against Port Melbourne Sharks. Now, Port Melbourne, I think last year finished seventh or eighth. They finished in a pretty good position before the season was called off after 18 rounds. Do you know much about Port Melbourne, like, you know, their, their off-season recruiting and, and form and things like that? Um, you know, how are they... Are they what they were like last year? Or have they dropped in quality? Uh, they've signed a few experienced players. I think that, as the AFL says, I think they see themselves in, the, in that, that window where they can make the six. And I think they'll be very close to making the six yep. this year if yep. all goes to plan. They've, like I said, they've got Josh Wilkins from Heidelberg. Ruthven's come there. So they've, they've picked up a few experienced players. Yeah. They play the ground well. really well. Sorry? Bafush. Yes, he's come yeah. across as well up yeah. front. So they've gone out and picked up a fair few players. I think they'll be a very good side. They play a, a, a decent brand of football as well. So it's not going to be an easy task, that's for sure, especially after last year, what they've done to us. Yeah. And, and at, at uh, SS Anderson, they're always a different prospect. I, I know when they travelled, that they've never been sort of that sort of, you know, consistent team. But something, I mean, we all know when we play in front of our own, when we play in our own, club, we, in, in our own clubs, we grow another 10 foot tall. But there's something about SS Anderson on those night matches that's a little bit mystique, a little bit <laughs> anything can happen. I know round one last year when Knights played there, it was just it was a disaster from a referee perspective, and it, it just I don't know. There's always some sort of spice whenever North played there in, you know, over the years. There's always some sort of whether it's a dubious call or the crowd gets involved, and you're really close to the lines too, so the tension rises quick. It is, it is a great atmosphere, though, at Port Melbourne. And like you said, it's, it's one of those pitches they play well. It's, it's very hard to bring points away from. The only positive, if there's any positive, is it's not going to be a night match. It's a 5.30 Saturday kickoff. Yeah, that might help us. Yeah, that might help us. Yeah. yeah, that would be good. Um, mate, now, um, guess, I, I guess now is an opportune time to actually kind of announce to everyone that next week the, um, the um, Episode 6 will be a St. Albans Dynamo-themed show. Uh, we will have the president, Ilya Dragicic, coming on um, and Dinamo will be the club in focus. And that will be ahead of the big Croatian derby, the first home game of the season against Dandenong City. Uh, and that's on the uh, Sunday, 27th of February, um, 5 p.m. kickoff. That's going to be a big, big game. Um, you're liking the home games being played on a, on a Sunday evening and going to stick to that formula this year, are you? Yes, we will. Uh, no, the first three games, I think it's the first three games, Dandy City... Uh, five o'clock, South Melbourne, five o'clock, and I think the Melbourne Knights is round six. That'll be a six o'clock kickoff mm -hmm. on a Sunday. We enjoy our Sundays. We, we find it's the juniors are there and we get a bit more of a crowd. So we will stay with the Sunday kickoff. But there is one Friday night. We're going to try a one Friday night game. Mid, yeah, I think it's against the Bentley Greens. O Oakley, okay. mate. Oakley on April 1st. Oh, is it Oakley? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I was actually going to ask you about that. Was that um, something out of the packet with, with the marketing crew behind the scenes with Ilya pulling the strings? Has he, has he got something special lined up for April Fools? And... No, no, I don't know. <laughs> we were even talking about it last year. The, the boys and the players and, and a lot of people around the club wanted to have a Friday night game just to yeah, experience good. it under lights at Churchill Reserve. So they said they're going to do one and there you go, it's come through. Oh, no excellent. Well. Something to look forward to. Like, there's a lot to look forward to in season 2022. Hopefully that damn corona doesn't um, inter interfere for a third year running. But, uh, Crooney, all the very best. Um, and hopefully we'll probably get one of your players on next week. We'll give, 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 give you a bit of a break from the, um, from the media commitments. But uh, we look forward to next week having St. Albans Dynamo as our featured club in focus, Ilya Dragicic, the new president, um, and hopefully someone from the playing staff. But, um, yeah. On, on that note, wishing you all the best and wishing Dynamo all the very, very best. And uh, and not just your Dynamo, St. Albans Dynamo, but, uh, you know, we want Dynamo Zagreb as well to beat Sevilla Friday morning. Wouldn't that be great? Yeah. It would be great, wouldn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks all for right. doing this, Trini. No worries. Thanks, guys, for having me on. Good on you. Absolute pleasure.
Karuni Rajov joining us from Churchill Reserve. Oh, I think it was Churchill Reserve, or maybe it was from his home. Um, Hey, that brings either, me either that or Ilya has built him a really good office. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> he, Ilya, I think, is involved in the construction industry. I he think. Is. So, uh, Adriatic if Developments, if yeah, you're looking for some sort of unit and townhouse development. Adriatic Developments, speak to Ilya Dragicevic. And um, when we're talking about plugs, um, a big, big thank you to our um, advertising sponsors today for this week's show, Macron, Plemet App and Slavicek Studio Architecture. Um We've had problems with our video tonight. Don't know what it is. We'll have to get onto it before next week, and hopefully by next week everything will be sorted. But uh, we will be running those ads throughout the week on our Facebook pages. Um, so do 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 make sure to tune into or regularly check on the Facebook. Also, subscribe if you haven't already to our Oz Crow Soccer Show channel on YouTube. Uh, there's all of our past um, episodes are on on that YouTube channel. Um, and there are also um, interviews and club in focus segments that have been um, edited and put um, put up there, uploaded in a shortened format. Uh, Josip, uh, what awaits you this weekend in sunny Queensland? Uh, I'm off to Queensland Lions home ground in Brisbane. Uh, the juniors have uh, their preseason tournament wrapping up on their final round over there. So uh, we'll be uh, the, we'll be playing guests this week. So I look forward to that. Um, and because it's the whole of club experience, it's like a gala day, the, the senior yep. men will be there too. And Queensland Lions is renowned for being always up there in the top two, three, making life hard for the customers. So it will be an actually a very interesting game. I'll look forward to hearing all about it maybe yep. next week. Shout out, a massive shout out to our two members, Gold VIP members, Vladimir Zetovic and Marko Maric, who have been with us from the start. You too can become a member as well and help our show. Um, you know, the more members we've got, the more quality equipment we can get to so we can keep on um, bringing you all the latest guests and what you're not. It's easy. From a, as low as $25 a month, you can become a member. Go to, and it's right down there, um, patreon.com forward slash Crow Soccer Show. Become a member um, and, you know, you'll be you'll be knowing that you'll be supporting a, um, a great program. We're only five episodes in, Yossip. We've had some brilliant guests so far, and next week St Albans did them or club in focus, and hopefully yep. we'll get some uh, some big name guests coming up in the next few shows as well. Yeah, it's a, it's a real it's a real pleasure and a delight to speak with all our clubs around the, around the country. Um, we just hope we can do it for many many more days to come and many more years to come. It, it's a great way to connect, and it's uh, interesting to hear where people are going with their direction in their clubs and how their community is travelling as well. Now, before we do go, just announcing over the next few weeks, we've got a lot, a lot of clubs that have already locked in a spot with the club in focus. Next week, it's St. Albans Dynamo. The week after that, it's Strathmore Split, thanks to Ozcrow Imports. Ozcrow Imports will be sponsoring Episode 7. I really look forward to um, Strathmore Split. Um, they're going to obviously have a change of coach. Their long-term coach, Harry Matkovic, as you mentioned at the top of the show, has left, so they'll be... Um, um, they'll be. They'll, have they announced the new coach yet, or not? No, yet? no, they're not. They, they, they did announce they're, they're on the lookout or you know recruitment yep. campaign. I guess state legs got a little bit of liberty because they don't come up until uh, March, March 19, 18, yeah. something like that. And so, and that, that that will be the first um, first Wednesday of March. That Strathmore split show, and then after that, a show I'm really looking forward to, and that's locked in for um, I think it's Wednesday the the 9th of March or something like that. Newcastle, Croatia. They will be our club in focus, and I am really excited about that. Yeah. Um, and that's that's a club that is very dear to your heart. It so, is, mate. Um, that, that's gonna the next three weeks definitely are huge. People, oh, I'm going to give a warning right now ahead of that. Three weeks to go. Right? I'll give you a warning. If Carl if Carl Zivkovic is on the show, it may just become the the Zilla and Zivka show. <laughs> I might have to take a roster night off that <laughs> that show. All good with me. My voice is about to go because I've been talking too much. Uh, sometimes, you know, my my wife calls me a bit of a brblavitsa at times, and I probably understand. She's right. Yeah, why. She's right. Yep. Yeah. Well, we didn't have the videos on tonight, so it was a talk fest. We were promising that. Um, mate, have a lovely, lovely weekend at Queensland Lines and uh, look forward to chatting with you next Wednesday night on the Ozcro Soccer Show. Thanks, Tonchi, and to all our guests around the country, and uh, our uh, viewers, Laku Norch, sweet dreams. Good night, Laku Norch, and remember, um, go Croatia, whichever one we want. Viva la Croatia. <laughs>